a lone stoic elk surveys his elkly kingdom in his endless search for a mate in the cold, barren Colorado highlands. Alone, solo, unaccompanied, solitary, mono. Today, my friends, I'm going to make the argument for mixing your mixes in mono. Mixing in mono, why would you do it? Um, now we have stereo, we can give our end users this amazing experience uh, placing instruments all across the stereo field in the same way that our ears would hear in uh, real life. And it gives this amazing realism and the sense of depth. Um, but, but why would we want to ch even check our mixes in mono? Well, the truth is, is that things like this... Focus! Focus! <laughs> things like this are starting to make an incredible resurgence. Um, these Bluetooth speakers, and most of them, this is a scary fact, most of them are monoral. What do we have now? We have the these little home spies that they like to cover up as home assistants. We have the, the Amazon Echo and the Google Home and whatever. Um, those speakers are really gaining popularity. People are starting to listen to them. And then if you're out on a boat with your friends or you're out in the woods and you're camping or whatever, you're going to be listening in likely mono. And if you're not listening in mono, you're going to be listening in stereo where the speakers are so close together. In fact, this speaker actually is in stereo, but the speakers are right here and here. So when I place this in the corner of some something somewhere, it's going to sound, for all intents and purposes, mono. Now, checking your mix in mono will allow you to understand and hear what a simulated version of your mix will sound like when it's played out of these kinds of speakers. Um, a recent poll came out asking people what device they listen to their music mostly on. And depressingly, computer laptop speakers, and then the second entry, I believe, was headphones, which is actually, that's, that's a victory. Uh, now we have that awesome stereo we've been working on the whole time. But, but, I mean, notice how many people are taking your beautiful mix, you worked on these amazing speakers, and you did everything you could, and then they're reducing it down to laptop speakers, which are not mono, but they almost are. They're so close together that, um, you know, a lot of hit records now, they'll have, uh, whenever there is stereo, when there's, when there's a stereo situation that happens in the record, it's very dramatic. I think it's because they realize that um, so many people are listening on these new mediums that they're kind of preparing music for it. What does that mean for you? Well, that means that you need to have an ability to take a, just one of your fingers, push a little button, and be able to bounce back and forth between a mono version of your mix and a stereo version of your mix. If the speaker system is in fact mono, it's in fact mono, meaning that there aren't two elements making those sound at once, that it's forcing your left and right information into one, it's summing them together into one thing, you can have a lot of issues happen if you've never checked your mix before in, in, in mono. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Ableton and I'm going to show you how to set up um, just a quick, super easy way to check your mix, your stereo mix in mono. Check it out. All right, well here we are in live and I have two different tracks here, one with a good mix in it and one with a bad mix in it. Let's go ahead and listen to the good mix. There are three elements, there's drums, there's a synth, and there's a bass. And let's go ahead and listen to the bad mix. Okay, so you might be like, well, they sound pretty decent. Both of them sound pretty decent. I don't really see what's so bad about the bad one. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to delete this and just show you how to do it. In the utilities section, utility, under your audio effects, there's a preset called mono. If you just drop that in there, what it does is it reduces the width all the way to zero. And what does that mean? It's summing the left and right channels, okay? Which is essentially what all these little Bluetooth speakers are going to be doing. They're taking the left and the right and they're pushing them into the same channel, okay? So here's the good mix. And here's the good mix in mono. So we've lost some stuff. There's, uh, you know, I hear less reverb, I hear less, um, you know, depth in the mix, but that's just, that's what mono does, okay? But... I'm still retaining the balance. I still hear the kick, the snare, the, the, the synth, I hear the bass. Everything sounds pretty much the same level. Right? And so what I would consider that to be 
is a mix that's ready for mono. It's mono compatible. When someone decides to destroy your beautiful creation with their crappy little mono speaker, then it's still going to work. They're still going to hear your elements and it's fine. So let's listen to mix two without it on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to play this and I'm going to engage the mono. Now listen to what happens. The bass almost disappears. The snare drum sounds way out in front. Um, basically what's happening is that we're losing, we're getting phasing issues. We're losing a lot in the mix. And what I'm trying to show you is that when I turn this off and I play these together, that's the good one. That's the bad one. Let me show you what's happening. In the master channel, I've dropped in an instance of a plugin that you might not have, and that's fine. Um, it's just uh, Isotope's uh, stereo imaging plugin imager. And what it has is this handy dandy little thing over here called the phase correlation meter. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play this without the mono thing on. This is the good mix, quote unquote. Okay, so what we're noticing is that we're staying in this plus one range. Okay, everything is staying up here. Okay, and you can see we're staying within this. This is another area. This vector scope is kind of showing this is another area that um, is within what we would consider a target ra uh, ratio, all right? So when I play the bad mix, watch this phase correlation here. We're dipping down here under this line, okay? So what's occurring is that it's showing us what's going to potentially disappear if we turn on this mono switch. So when I turn this mono switch on on the good mix, watch the phase correlation here. We're gonna stay exactly in the center, okay? That means we're, you know, this mix is now, because it's mono, it's showing you that, okay, yeah, of course, there's no difference between the left and the right channels. When I play this track, the reason things are disappearing is because when I had this mono switch off, we were jumping into this area. Now, the question comes, do I need this? Do I need a phase correlation meter to know whether my mix is mono compatible or not? Yeah, I guess maybe on like a scientific level, but this is totally, un I mean, really in a lot of ways, this is something more uh, for... A mastering engineer with a bunch of stem masters trying to really just lock in that that perfect uh, difference. Really, you don't need to do this. All you really need to do is just have this damn thing on your master channel and go up to your little key guy, turn off the keyboard, hit the little guy right there, map a key to it, and just when you're working, okay, you're trying to make decisions, hit your Q key and just constantly check for mono compatibility. It's that simple. It, this does not have to be complicated, okay? A lot of the, I mean, this is art. A lot of this is interpretive, you know? Maybe there's a situation where you really want this crazy uh, stereo effect to happen, and it's not mono compatible, but you still want it. That's fine. Remember, a lot of people, the second entry we saw, people were listening to things in headphones, okay? But this is really simple. You don't have to buy anything. It just comes with Ableton. It's right there. Just map a key to your mono switch and check for your mono compatibility and you're just going to be a happier person in general. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it didn't make you too depressed. <laughs> um, if you like this kind of thing, this is the kind of thing I talk about. Like, comment, subscribe if you feel like it. Much love to you guys. Thanks. I'll see you next time.